you for welcoming. My topic will be about static versus dynamic linking. And I want to share some lessons um, learned uh, from building framework support and Swift support into CocoaPods. Static versus dynamic linking is this the same like libraries versus frameworks. They often go hand in hand with each other, but they're not necessarily coupled to each other. So let me clarify that a bit uh, further why I didn't uh, choose that at, as my topic, because it will be about build projects in general. Um, there's this thing called uh, Hollywood principle. Did you ever heard about that? Frameworks are a concept um, to structure your code and you put in your code, think about UIKit and the app delegate, while uh, libraries are more um, some sort of toolboxes with loosely coupled functions, helper functions you can use and you call them, um, while frameworks are called, um, managed to call your code. Uh, so what is that? Um, this is actually the template icon uh, from Xcode for the framework template. So as you see, it's a toolbox and uh, the build product is not necessarily coupled to um, the, um, the architecture uh, you're using for your um, dependency. Um, so it will be about uh, the different build products and um, the linking. Uh, so let's dive directly into static libraries. Uh, what is a static library? Yeah, let's uh, throw up uh, the main page um, of LD. What is it saying about it? Um, it's saying it's a collection of um, object files and a um, table of contents. So let's see how we get there. Um, we will see here something familiar. Uh, we will begin um, with the source code we have. That's what we have written. And um, the source code is given into Clang um, or Swift C. And um, Clang uh, makes object files out of it, it compiles them. So, and for static libraries, uh, we throw those um, object files into RunLab, and RunLab builds out um, what we have uh, on the main page before. That's the R archive, and that's this table of contents together with the um, object files. And uh, we do that not only once, but we do that multiple times for each architecture. Um, we need to use support for our platform. So for the iPhone, that's uh, for example ARM 47 and ARM 64. And uh, we depo smash them all together into one uh, big universal file or FAT binary, which is a very exponential word uh, for it. So here again, a bit of pseudo code, um, very ugly because this is bash script, it's not in Swift scripting. Uh, so what is important about is already written in the first line. Um, we um, invoke Xcode build, um, or invoke it by um, Xcode um, with a target, which is a library target to build a static library. And uh, what is important for the linking aspect is that um, one of those build settings um, is macro type and there's a set as static lib. Um, so the rest is probably helpful if you uh, want to take a look later on in my slides. Um, I'm not sure if this code would actually run, but um, it will give an uh, impression what is going on under the hood. Um, so what is happening with the static libs if, they, if I integrate them into my app? Um, LD, as uh, stated here, uh, will pull out the O files and uh, res resolve um, the references we use out of this um, static library. So um, as a think model, this is not uh, really what is actually happening. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I made some simplifications here. Um, so those gray boxes uh, would need to be actually um, O files, object files, and there would be symbol mangling applied, and it would be a lot longer and more uglier, so we have now just uh, implementation files and header files in, instead. Um, so and what is happening then on link time, um, what uh, will make LD out of it? Yeah, it will simply take uh, what is in there and uh, build one big binary out of it. Um, yeah, and that is. Um, so, and there we are already um, at the point of the framework. Uh, what is the framework? We have here, as an example, Alamo Fire, which is uh, somehow the um, uh, equivalent of eighth networking in the Swift world, a network library, open source, and very popular in GitHub. 
Um, so um, a framework is basically a file bundle. Nothing more, it's a special name directory on our file system. Um, the first entry in here is the um, executable. And what we see is um, this executable has no file suffix, there's no .a um, in the end. Uh, so we drop the file suffix, and furthermore we need uh, some um, additional stuff around to have a linkable framework. We need a um, model definition, and the model definition is given for Clang by the model map, uh, which is uh, here in the directory models and model model map. Um, that is where it is placed. Um, this is a uh, Clang model map. It's a special uh, descriptive format, uh, which is, defines where uh, you find the umbrella header um, and further headers. And those headers have to go also in there because all this stuff is needed for Clang um, to compile your code and to know what is the interface of the code you're linking against. Um, so that is uh, defined in there, um, but it is ripped out um, once you distribute your um, app um, because the user who actually executes the application won't need any headers and you probably don't want into specific cases that the user has your headers because he um, can make assumptions about what is going on in your application and yeah. Uh, you, I mean, it is obvious that you have a certain dependency and uh, you, you are using, for example, a Lama file uh, for networking, um, but um, you don't want to clutter your um, um, app binary with additional stuff you don't need there. So what is for more in there? Uh, for Swift, um, you need not headers and uh, the model maps, you need a, some more too. Um, but you need an additional the Swift model, which contains information about the AST, and the Swift doc, uh, which is the additional part, the documentation um, part in the library. Um, my coworker uh, JP did uh, a lot of effort around that with uh, the project Jesse. Um, yeah, and furthermore, we have one specific thing um, here we see now um, as the info plist, it contains. Um, uh, copyright information, versioning information, and stuff like that. Furthermore, we can put uh, further dependencies into a framework. Um, so yeah, but that's the framework. Um, building a static framework is um, not so much uh, different from both, from building a static library and uh, building a um, dynamic framework. We have now another target uh, product type in Xcode. It's a framework. Uh, and based on that uh, template type. And, um, but the build setting, um, and this is nothing uh, what Xcode offers by default. Uh, the build setting macro type has to uh, set to static lib. Yeah. And what is basically happening under the hood in comparison, uh, we scaffold this directory structure um, and drop the file suffix. So a little warning here, in this place, um, the static frameworks do not behave uh, exactly the same uh, like you would expect if you now already dynamic frameworks. Their clusters um, are, do not live in a separate bundle. Um, they live uh, together with your application code uh, in the main bundle. So, um, and now again to a different um, build prototype, um, we have dynamic libraries. And what is a dynamic library? Uh, one important thing before linking what um, our main page says about that is it is a final length image. And that says already a lot. I mean, those are three words describing um, this build product, um, but this describes uh, something about the differences. So what is happening here? Um, again, um, Clang or Swift C compiles our source code. Um, and um, then we will link it um, in comparison to uh, static libraries, which are not linked before we integrate them. Uh, frameworks are already linked uh, before they are integrated uh, somewhere else. Uh, so as a result of the linking process, we will uh, get a macro file. And um, again, this is happening multiple times for each architecture we have to support for the target platform. So here again, some pseudo code, what is going on? Um, the target type is a library, and the macro type is a dilib, is mhdilib, um, which is the new important information here. Um, 
Building a dynamic framework is basically uh, the same in comparison to a uh, static li library to a static framework. We have another uh, build, um, another build product uh, structure, and we drop the file suffix for the executable. Um, yeah. But what is then happening on, with dialogs um, on link time? Um, and this is here again in so, some sort of uh, think model. Um, again, simplifications applied here. Um, no mangling, no stuff like that. Now we have Swift files um, because on, um, with Swift you can use only dynamic linking, um, at least officially. Um, so um, what is happening on dynamic linking? We have um, exported symbols and we have symbols we depend on. on and on link time, uh, we more or less uh, encode, um, connect those with each other and encode that they de depend on each other. Um, how is this encoding of that a specific dialog depends on another dialog? How is this happening? Uh, so we will see that here. Um, the macro uh, file format um, offers in comparison to the object file format um, a header with loud comments, and um, there we can put a specific comments into, um, which allows us to specify um, what is our dialog. Um, this is the first uh, thing, what is happening here. This is the output of otool uh, dash l, uh, which is really helpful for debugging um, if you link against dialogs and something is not working, if you get, get an error by dial, LD um, because he's, it is missing um, dynamic lang libraries at runtime and your application just fails instead of opening up. So um, we are saying where our dialog is uh, located and the next comment here is um, already a dependency. Uh, what we have here is the dependency against the Swift core, um, basically all our Swift uh, libraries or fr dynamic frameworks will um, have an entry like that. Um, and furthermore, we have uh, the AirPath entries. And the AirPath entries um, tell the dynamic linker where to search for our frameworks. Um, so here again is a list of those most uh, important um, dialog uh, or load comments uh, for daily usage uh, with dynamic uh, linking um, to um, specify a dependency, uh, and we do that not uh, over the um, graphical interface Xcode offers. We can do that by the build setting of LD flags. Um, to uh, specify the um, name of the dialog, you will touch that in really rare cases. Um, it's somehow an advanced option. The defaults are really uh, sensitive and, and uh, good uh, presets. Um, and the uh, AirPath uh, tree, um, which is configured by LD RunPath search paths, um, which can be more relevant. So what is this uh, concept AirPath? Um, it uh, will be seen uh, like most of the times, uh, if you don't do um, any system development um, in shipping system libraries, um, it will be the prefix of um, the other comments using relative paths and it is used by the LD at runtime. It can be seen somehow as the equivalent of uh, dollar path of uh, bash, uh, but just for macros. Uh, yeah, let's wrap up already. Um, what we have um, with this new possibilities on iOS 8 with uh, dynamic linking and dynamic frameworks. Advantages of dynamic frameworks. They are easy to, to distribute and integrate if compiled. That's what people say. Uh, I wouldn't say so because um, if you want to build an archive for the App Store and have a uh, pre-compiled uh, um, dynamic framework, you would run into problems because you want uh, to distribute a binary which supports the iPhone simulator, but um, the iPhone simulator uh, architecture slices should not go into the App Store. That makes no sense. We don't distribute um, iPhone uh, simulator apps over the App Store, but they are not sliced out automatically. So uh, there's some extra work needed and it's not necessarily easier than uh, having static frameworks or static libraries uh, at this place. What is indeed an advantage of them is they encode their dependency. Um, they use uh, two-level namespacing you, so you don't have to care about 
Um, I'm using a specific dependency in my uh, static library, um, and it could be used by other dependencies of uh, the user, so out of the perspective, out of a uh, framework developer. Um, so you uh, don't have to mangle names yourself. Uh, if you uh, use uh, like a network library, uh, you don't have to prefix every class uh, just to use it and allow still the user to use it in the uh, usual distributed form. Um, because this does not work for a static library, this would uh, lead into um, symbol conflicts. It reduces uh, the file size of use for your app and uh, app extensions if you have both. And it separates resources in, uh, in distant bundles. And those distant bundles are actually working um, for dynamic frameworks. So disadvantages of dynamic linking. It limits the dead code stripping. As we have seen on the main page, it was stated, is this a final linked image? What is final can't be touched again um, on compile time or link time. Uh, so um, everything what is in a dynamic library um, is in there. And um, it depends where you integrate, if you need it or not. Uh, so um, it won't be. Um, Change and if you just use the half of the code in the um, dynamic library, um, still everything would be shipped. Uh, they're just different for static libraries, as just the old files which are needed are pulled out of the library. Um, it increased load times, but I do not think that's, for most of the cases, uh, really relevant in practice. There are some restrictions. We are not really free um, in, in our choice about uh, what kind of uh, build product we use. If we want to use the interface inspector, uh, we won't probably use dynamic frameworks because we want to use um, IB Designable to have our uh, view components and preview in the interface inspector. Furthermore, um, the official version is dynamic linking is needed for Swift. And one last thing, when Ultron build settings are cross targets and you're trying out different things, uh, clean won't do the job over Xcode. Uh, so this is the takeaway message. The golden rule is nuke derived data uh, just to make sure that everything is in the same state and uh, your application will still run for your coworker uh, who, who won't have the cache you have. Thanks for your attention.